In this video, we are going to run an event study in Excel. An event study is a way to statistically test if a piece of news, such as an announcement, had a meaningful effect on a stock's price. That is to see, to check, to see if there's a stock price reaction. This event study is going to be using Tesla data um, and the event that we are going to analyze is a Twitter poll that Elon Musk put out that uh, asked if he should sell 10% of his Tesla stock. Now, there's been a lot uh, written about this particular Twitter poll and some of the, the problems, but at the time, there was a lot of interest if this was going to meaningfully affect um, Tesla's stock price, and this is what an event study is here to test. The first step in running a event study is to identify the event date so we can uh, create something called event time. Now, this Twitter poll was, um, the results of it were announced on November 6th, 2021. So if we go over to the date column, we can scroll down and looking at the stock's returns, um, we notice that there is a November 8th and a November 5th. And that's because uh, November 6th was a weekend day. Um, in finance event studies, we care about trading days. That is, the market has to be open in order for this news to affect stock price, or specifically for us to see how that news affects stock price. So our event date is going to be um, November 8th, 2021. And let's just highlight that to make it very clear. Now, the next step here is to create event time. Event time is going to be all around um, or is going to be centering time around um, our event date. So in event time, um, the event date is going to be time equals to zero. Now, we need to do this systematically in Excel, and this is the way I like to do it. So the first thing I do is I create what I call a fake time column doesn't uh, really matter the, the label. And I just set it up as some numbers. So one, two, I'm just creating a formula and we will drag that down. Now it doesn't particularly matter what number you start with because we're gonna delete this anyhow. So in event time, scrolling down, we need this day to be day zero. After these days, it's going to be one, two, three, um, negative one, negative two. As you can see, this is going to get tiring. So what we're going to do, um, let me delete all this. What we are going to do is create a column that uses a formula to, oop, to develop event time. So let's label it event time and we'll scroll back down. So the way I do this is I say, um, use a formula that says this minus this cell, so the exact same cell, except I am going to lock down that second one. This way, when we drag it down, the, the formula will say, take fake event time and subtract off whatever we have in our day on the event day. So what we can do is go all the way up here. Ah. We can copy our formula and we can also drag it down and boom, we have event time. Now I'm going to copy and then paste the values so it's no longer a formula and they're just regular old numbers and we can delete this column. We no longer need it. Now, um, in order to, uh, to calculate the, how this uh, announcement affected stock price, we need to create a counterfactual. That is, what would have uh, Tesla's stock price done in the absence of this, knowledge, or of this announcement? So we are going to use CAPM to uh, develop this counterfactual. So we're going to calculate the expected return on, on every day so we can subtract that off. In order to do that, we are going to estimate um, 
uh, we, well, we have to estimate cap M. So when we're estimating cap M, the left hand side is going to be our excess returns. And in the context of cap M, that is the returns on Tesla minus the risk free rate. Now at this time period, the risk free rate was zero. And so it doesn't really matter, but we should do it correctly. Anyhow, let me format this real quick. So what we've got here is a column of Tesla's excess returns. And this is going to be the left hand side of our estimation of cap M. So to do that, we need to run a regression. So data, data analysis, we click on regression. Now, what we're trying to explain our Y variable is going to be Tesla's excess returns. Now I highlighted this entire column, including the label up here, which will become important here in a second. Now, when we're estimating cap M, um, in an event study, we don't actually want to include the date of the event. Um, and it's generally best practice to avoid using the couple days prior to the announcement, just in case any information gets leaked out. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually stop our estimation at day negative six. So five days before the announcement. So that's our, our Y variable, what we're trying to explain. And what we're going to use to explain to this is the market um, excess return. So this column RMRF. And we can drag that down all the way here. Now we check the labels box and we'll hit run. One thing I do want to mention is this data over here. So columns A through H is coming from Yahoo Finance. I just downloaded their archive uh, data. This column RM, RF, and RF, RF is the risk-free rate, comes from Kenneth French's data repository, and then I just merged the two data sets together. So if we click OK, we get an output, and these two coefficients are what are important. Now in the, the context of CAPM, this 0.207 would be our alpha. We don't care about that at the moment. Um, or in this context, what we care about is that number, that 1.2, or sorry, 1.925. That is the beta that we estimated over this time period. So at this, uh, in this estimation, Tesla had a beta of 1.925. So to come up with our expected return, I'm going to label it to be explicit at expected return via cap M. So cap M expected return is going to be the risk-free rate plus beta, which is 1.925 times RM, RF. And so we get a expected return of 0.01925. So basically zero. Now, if we drag that down, we're going to get the expected return of Tesla day by day by day. So let's drag that down. Now for our event study, what we care about is an abnormal return. So what was uh, Tesla's market reaction in excess of the expected return on that day? So what we do is we take Tesla's return we subtract off the expected return and we get our abnormal return. So we can drag that down. Now to actually run the event study, we need to look at these abnormal returns um, near our event. So we need an event window. That is when we think this information might have affected Tesla stock price. For this particular example, I'm choosing between negative 5 and 15. Um, this will just help us see uh, the, the full reaction. Any sort of window is appropriate. 
Um, the tighter the window, so let's say negative one to one, would uh, be more um, more tight around the announcement and perhaps isolate it, the, the effect of the announcement from other types of news. But what we're going to do here is calculate a longer event window and we're going to calculate what's known as a cumulative abnormal return, um, often abbreviated CAR. So we, what we do is we use a formula, the sum of O29 through O2, or 249 through O249. Now what we want to do here is lock this down. The second one, nope, sorry, the first one down. What this is going to allow us to do is to drag this formula down. So in this first one, it said sum from this number, O249, that we locked down through O249. Now, when we dragged it down one cell, that the start of our summation is still stuck at O249, which is by design, but now it's going through O250. We can drag this down all the way to um, day 15 in event time, and this will be our cumulative abnormal return. So if our, our notation here, um, if we were going to say the cumulative abnormal return over this window, it would be car negative 5 to 15, so the start of the window through the end of the window, is equal to 7.55%. So that's that number. But let's actually look at how the um, cumulative abnormal return or, uh, reacts to the stock price, or more specifically, how stock, the stock price of Tesla reacts, and we can plot it via the cumulative abnormal return. So to create some, some space, what I'm going to do is copy this, paste, paste the values up here and delete this. This is just going to clean things up here. So what we've got here is, uh, I'll bring this down just a little bit. So what we have is event time for plotting, and here we have the cumulative abnormal return for plotting. So let's actually plot this. So use the scatter plot, um, connecting the dots, and let's clean up this plot before we actually um, do anything. There we go. Okay, so what we've got here on the x-axis is event time. On the y-axis, we have the cumulative abnormal return. So whatever for whatever reason, Tesla's stock price was up um, quite a bit, actually, on day negative five. Um, as time moved on, uh, the cumulative abnormal return didn't change much because, well, in this case, the return was close to the expected return on each one of those days. So as we add them up, we're essentially adding up a bunch of zeros or at least small deviations. On the event date, um, and this is over that weekend, um, the, the stock price started dropping and dropped pretty, pretty far. So all the way down to about negative 11. This is a pretty big drop. But over time, um, over the next couple weeks, the stock price recovered. Now, this would be um, a plot of the cumulative abnormal return. How we interpret it from one simple event study um, might be that this event didn't really have much um, effect on the long run value of, of Tesla. And some information or some revelations came out later on that sort of supports this. Um, but the, the, the key thing is I wanted to show you how to run an event study and how to make one of these cumulative abnormal return plots in Excel. I hope this was helpful and um, thanks for watching.